sorry if you can hear any thunder. Uh, I live in Florida and it's raining pretty much all the time here. I hope that doesn't bother you. So anyway, sorry. Hi, my name is Julia, aka Makeup and Mystery. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a look using this palette. It is called Persephone Goddess of Spring Eyeshadow Palette and it is by the brand Park Avenue Cosmetics. This palette was sent to me. I am on their PR list. They are a smaller, independent brand and they mostly make lashes. Then they just released this new palette in the past month. I have took product shots of this and posted them a while back, but I still haven't fully sat down and just played with this palette yet. So that's what we're doing today. This isn't a formal palette review. This is my thing with eyeshadow palette reviews. I like doing them. I like testing out new palettes, but I can't do a full review of the palette because there's tons of shades in here. I can't use all of these in one look, and I could do one of those videos where it's like three looks, one palette, but typically for me, when I do one look, I do this crazy look that takes me so long, and to do three eyeshadow looks just for one video, maybe I'll get more into that, and maybe I'll simplify the eyeshadow looks that I do. Who knows? I don't know. I'm gonna do something a little bit more editorial than a typical, you know, eyeshadow, but it's not gonna be crazy. I have some inspiration photos. I collect inspiration photos, and I put them all in like a Google Doc so I can see what the vision for my look is going to be, so I'll put that right here. Here are some of my inspiration photos. But yeah, I'm really excited about this palette. Um, I'll include some better videos and b-roll shots of this right now. Some pressed glitters in here and then there's some shimmer shades and I'm really excited about these pressed glitters especially that one on the top left with the stars in it. It just looks so intriguing to me and I'm just really excited to get into this palette. I'm gonna go on to the tutorial. I'm just gonna do one eye for the camera and then do the other eye for my TikTok like I always do. So if you're interested in what look I'm going to create with this palette, stay tuned and I'm probably gonna do somewhat of a chit chat get ready with me. So if that's something that you're interested in, keep on watching. That sounds fake. I don't know. I like channel my inner Samantha Rundle. For this look, I'm thinking of doing one of those where you kind of blend it into my Blend it up into your brow, kind of, but only maybe like the first part of the brow. First, I am going to be going in with that mint green shade. When I first got this palette, I was like, oh, I want to do something with that because that is such a pretty green. I love a good mint shade, and I feel like a lot of eyeshadow palettes don't have shades like this. I'm just going to put that on this part of my eye. I know my brows are kind of intense <laughs> right now. I still haven't figured out the perfect brow shape for me and I'm going, I'm like bouncing back and forth between which products to use and I don't have a specific brow routine <laughs> right now. So yeah, I'm still figuring that out. I was really liking the soap brows that I was doing, but those take so long to do. I don't have a specific idea of what I'm doing with this look but I kind of have a general shape. I just don't know where the colors are going to go. I got this comment a little while ago on TikTok and someone was like, or I don't even know what how it was phrased but they said something like, your brows annoy me. And it was in a video that was a makeup compilation so it was just a bunch of different makeup looks and my brows looked pretty different in each makeup look that I was doing in that video. So I replied back and I was just like, uh, what do you mean? I have a lot of different types of brows in this video, so which one are you talking about? And then they were like, no, it's like the overall shape of them that I don't like. And I'm like, well, then I can't really fix that. That's just how my brows are arched. I have my own <laughs> issues with my brows, and I don't even know who commented this. They probably didn't even have a profile picture. Can't do much about that, so I don't know what to tell you, man. I am going to go in with this kind of mauve shade in the palette. This shade right here. It's like a purpley kind of red. I'm going to put that on my crease, but not the outer part, but like the mid section right here. I think it's a really good mix of mattes, glitters, and shimmers, because sometimes it annoys me when makeup palettes are all shimmers or, I mean, I, I like an all matte palette though. That's the thing. Like I would rather have more mattes than, than shimmers. I don't know. 
actually I'm not completely sure about that but sorry my room I mean I have a window right next to me I film in my room at my desk where I do all my stuff I would love to have a full-on makeup room and like a full makeup studio wouldn't that just be awesome <laughs> that's my goal like when I'm older and when I live on my own live somewhere that's not expensive rent. I'd love to have my own makeup studio, my own prop studio, my own costume room. No, I mean, this would all be like in one room, not like <laughs> one room for each, but after that purple shade, I am going to blend a lighter shade. I'm gonna be using this peach shade and I'm just going to be putting that on my brow bone just to blend that purple up into my brow. I've never seen a color story like this so I think it's their first eyeshadow palette too. I think this brand Park Avenue Cosmetics I think they have I well I know they have lashes because I've tried them but I think they also might have lip products. I don't know what kind of lip product it might be a liquid lipstick but I'm not sure because I've never tried those there are these three pinkish, orangish kind of peach shades. I mean, they are a little bit different, but it's that one, that one, and that one. They're all very similar. I mean, I love the, that kind of shade because as you can see, it blended perfectly with the other one and it was a really good transition shade. But they are very similar, so that's one thing to note. Now I'm taking that blue matte color. I don't have a lot of shades like this. Um, it reminds me of the blue velvet blue almost. So I'm going to be taking that blue and winging it out. Okay, so the thing with doing these looks that have a ton of different colors in them, you gotta kind of be very, very light-handed at first. When you're using a lot of different colors like this, the colors can uh, get muddy together very, very easily. So I just try and use a tiny little brush, like this is how small the brush is that I'm using. And I just try to be as light-handed. Even with this, there's a tiny bit of fallout. Um, I didn't notice that much fallout on these shades over here, but on this blue shade I'm noticing a lot of fallout. Maybe that's just because I forgot to tap off my brush, I don't know. Just make sure that you have a specific place on the eye where you want to put the color because I feel like if you kind of just blend them all together and do like the windshield wiper motions, that just makes it super muddy and then the colors all just blend together. And the point of me using all of these colors is so you can see all of them. <laughs> so this look today, the makeup artist Blonde Taki, she actually, I'm gonna review her palette. I've used her palette a couple times. This is her palette. Um, Anime Dreams is what it's called. Anyway, um, I'm gonna be doing that a review of her palette next with uh, Lunar Skies Cosmetics. I saw a look that she did recently and it was so cool. It was like no eyeshadow, hardly any eyeliner. There might have been like a little bit of eyeshadow at the beginning, but it was mostly just gems in the shape of like how you would do kind of graphic liner. Oh my god, it was so pretty. I'll put pictures of her look. Follow her because she's like such a talented makeup artist and every look that she does I'm obsessed with. I thought that was really cool because I had never really seen looks that were like that where it was just like all gems. Um, I'd seen looks that are like eyeshadow and then you put little gems like the you know euphoria style. I don't know I just really like this color story. I have never thought to put these colors together but since they're in this palette in front of me it's like perfect. I'm not completely sure what shade I'm going to use on the lid, but I'm definitely going to use one of those pressed glitters. Y'all are sleeping on these indie brands. Oh, I forgot. I have a code with them. It, it's just makeup and mystery. I think it's 10% off. If you're interested in this palette, uh, I have that code. I'll link everything down below like I always do. So for the lower lash line, they have this kind of teal shade right there. This is really fun. I I haven't really just sat down in a while and played with makeup. What I really love doing is just blending eyeshadows and playing with color. Like That's really all I want to do. These colors are very mermaid-like almost. Um, my hair is very kind of mermaid pastel. This palette would be good if you were going to be doing a mermaid 
look, which I haven't really done any looks like that with like the scales and all the little details. I've never done a look like that. Maybe I should. So I did the other eye and I added a little bit of shimmer on the outside of like this whole little thing that I got going on on my brows. I got this idea to do this technique from their account is called Twin Tutorials. It's like these two um, sisters and they both do makeup tutorials and they have a YouTube channel. I'll link their YouTube and I'll put their Instagram right here. I love their content a lot because they just do very like colorful and creative looks and similar to the looks that I want to create. So I was watching one of their YouTube videos and she put the NYX glitter primer on instead of using like a base, you know, or like a concealer base for the glitter or for the shimmer to cut your crease. So I'm going to be doing that today. I've never tried any of the like, eyeshadow cut crease bases, like the P. Louise ones. Like I've never, I've never tried any of that stuff. Not that I'm against using those, but I've just never, I don't know. I just usually use concealer and that works pretty well for me. Thinking about just going in with my finger and just like putting glitter on the eyelid, but I do like the precise shape of it a little bit better than just randomly putting it with your finger. I think this glitter, this pressed glitter, would work even better if you were putting it on your finger. I did a little bit um, using my finger on this eye, but I had to use a tiny brush to get kind of these uh, areas closer to the crease. So yeah, just trying to get a shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's a glitter primer and not concealer, so it's not as um, intense. Now I'm going to go in with two glitters. The first one I'm going to go in is this hot pink one right there. I'm just going to be putting that on the outer crease like I did right there. I'm taking a tiny little brush. I don't know. This I think this is a paint brush. Just slowly packing that on. It takes a little while if you're using a small brush like this one. I've been listening to Bruno Mars' this old music, which I used to love Bruno Mars. I mean, he hasn't really released anything in a while. I think 2016 was the last time. And honestly, I feel like that was such a good year because I was just so obsessed with that album at the time. His old music is so good though. Like I'm listening to all of the old songs that, you know, used to be popular and I haven't heard them in so long. So even like the really popular ones like Gorilla, I always love Runaway Baby, that one was so good, oh my god. Even like When I Was Your Man, that one was so popular, but like I haven't heard it in a couple of years. So it just, it hits different when it's like a really popular song that you heard that was so overplayed a couple of years ago. But now listening to it after I haven't heard it in a while, it's just like, oh my god, I love this song. This is a good song. I was, I'd say like 11 to like 16 during like the Bruno Mars era. Now that I'm a little bit older, I mean, I'm almost 21, I feel like his music, I just appreciate it maybe a little bit more than I did when I was 12. I don't know. But I guess if you're like my age, maybe re-listen to Bruno Mars. I feel a similar type of way how I feel about his music, the way I feel about The Weeknd's music, even though they're completely different artists, you know, but they have a similar vibe, so I don't know. I'm also going in with this light pink glitter right in the center of the palette. I'm just going to be tapping that over the pink glitter that I just put down just to make it, you know, a little bit more not so hot pink, and it'll blend it into the other glitter that I'm going to be Normally, I wouldn't use this many glitters on the lid since I'm trying this palette out for the first time I just wanted to go all out and that's what I always do uh, when I do these type of looks But I really like the shape that I have going with this look, but back to Bruno Mars. Uh, I don't know just Versace on the floor And um, too good to say goodbye those songs, I mean, I was obsessed with them when they came out too. There's just something about those songs. I mean, it's very like 80s kind of vibe. And that's how the uh, weekend's newest album kind of felt. It was very 80s influence. I am going in with this white gold star shimmer glitter, I mean. There's little stars in here, which don't apply super easily. I think the stars, they're just so big, and I'm putting this on such a tiny area of my face. Also, on my lid, where, you know, my lid creases. So, maybe if I was putting this star glitter on, like, my cheekbone or something like that, the stars would stick a little bit better because there's less movement going on. It's almost like green reflex, kind of. This is a really interesting glitter because in the pan, it looks 
completely white when you apply it there's all these reflex of like gold and green so now that the eyeshadow is completely done i am going to apply my lashes i'm using these they are from the brand bold face makeup what they look like these are one of the more wispy and longer pairs i really wanted to choose a longer pair for this look because it is very you know avant-garde and editorial the style that these are in is called After Hours, and I was literally just talking about The Weeknd's album that's called After Hours. What a coincidence. That's weird. I was sent these lashes. They sent me a huge package of like 18 pairs of lashes and then a bunch of their brow pencils. I'm making TikToks with them as we speak. I'm going to do this like lash try on haul where every new look that I do, I'm going to wear a different pair of their lashes. Probably won't post that for a long time because I got to do 18 makeup looks. Alright, so here are the lashes. Um, they're very wispy, but they're not extremely intense, but they're just very pretty and long. I'm going to be doing the rest of my face, and I'm not going to be talking about products in this. If you have seen some of my other videos, you might remember that I do a movie recommendation every single video, and it's more just like oh, I really like this movie, and I just want to talk about it. Today's movie is Palm Springs. You've seen this, you know. Uh, it's amazing. I think this came out last week, and it's free on Hulu. Usually I try to mention movies that are free for people who have Amazon Prime or Netflix, but I guess Hulu falls in there too. It's starring Andy Samberg, and I honestly haven't seen too much stuff with him in it. I mean, I've seen him on SNL, of course, and like, you know, the music videos. And I can't remember her name, the actress. She played the mother in How I Met Your Mother, which I've watched, but a long time ago, so I don't, I mean, I know, like, she's not, she's not a main character in How I Met Your Mother, like, she comes in, in the, at the end. <laughs> it's kind of like Groundhog Day, the movie. It kind of, I mean, it's the same concept where they're living the same day over and over again, which I love scenarios like that. I've never seen another movie besides Groundhog Day. I know there's that one movie, Happy Death Day, which I haven't seen. I thought it was awesome and it's just cool because I'm gonna try not to like give away many spoilers because you kind of just have to watch it. Oh, yeah. JK Simmons is in it. You feel like his character isn't gonna be that important. He is. Oh my god, I love his character. I love- well, you're gonna be like, what? Why do you love his character? Yeah, oh, you just have to watch it. It's so insane and it's one of those movies that makes you think about life and makes you have like an existential crisis and you just put yourself kind of in the shoes of the character and you're just like what would I do if I was living the same day over and over again and they're at a wedding in Palm Springs so like, that's the day that they relive over and over again uh, the soundtrack <laughs> watch the movie experience it and then just like listen to the soundtrack and it's just like the vibe that you feel when listening to that is like no other it's so good if it has a good soundtrack i feel like that makes the movie even better for me um i don't think i would have even liked this movie as much if the soundtrack wasn't so awesome yeah it, there are a lot of funny moments like it is you know it's mostly a comedy, but it's one of those movies that, you know, is somewhat lighthearted at times. It gets you thinking, it's not just cheap laughs, you know, like it is funny at times, but um, it's more than that. Like it goes deeper and you just think about life and it's so cool. I love the scenery. I mean, I've never been to Palm Springs, but I can kind of imagine what the vibe is like maybe. But if anybody's ever seen the show Love on Netflix, it's created by Judd Apatow, it came out I think a couple of years ago. It has three seasons about this couple and they live in LA and it's so good. Oh my god, that is one of my favorite shows. I mean, Twin Peaks is my all-time favorite show and I love like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, that whole universe too. But Love, and no one ever talks about it. Anymore. But if you've seen that show, I get a similar feeling when I watched Love to when I watched this movie. I highly, highly recommend this movie. I can't talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything. Loved the ending and oh my gosh. It's just, it's very kind of like trippy. Like, oh, it kind of reminded me of The Good Place. I mean, not really, like it's a different concept, but the way how The Good Place keeps like resetting and it just goes 
back and to the same thing over and over again, um, but like with a little bit of variance from the resets in that show. It's a similar concept, like it's very fast paced, a lot happens, but it's not difficult to absorb what's going on, you're not like lost or anything. There are things in that movie that a little bit like will catch you off guard, you're just like, whoa! <laughs> there are some really, really funny scenes that are just super, super fast paced and you just have to pay attention. Things just get so exaggerated, maybe is the word, in that situation there are no consequences for what you do and for what happens because the day just resets the next day and like none of this is permanent so there's a lot of situations in the movie or scenes that are just like so like out of the box and like insane but like it's so funny to watch that play out and like watch the other characters who aren't in the time loop like react to it. I just think you will really enjoy it and even if, it, if you don't think it's as amazing as I'm saying it is, it's still really funny so you're gonna get something out of it for sure. I made a list on Letterboxd. I'm obsessed with Letterboxd. I don't know if anybody uses that but I didn't start using it till this year and I just started vlogging all of the movies that I watch, like new movies, not um, movies that I've seen before, but like new ones that I've never seen. And I'm just having so much fun on that app. I, I have my account linked below. Even the free version of that app, you can just like see all the movies you've watched over time. Like the, you'll click like a specific year and it'll show you like all the movies you watched like that year. And it's, I don't know, it's really cool. I've literally just been listening to the Palm Springs soundtrack. And it's not like, there's a couple songs that were actually made for the movie, I'm pretty sure. But most of the songs on the soundtrack are like, you know, older songs that have already existed for a long time that weren't made for the movie, but they're in the movie. It's almost like they just made a playlist of just really good songs and then used it in the movie. And I just, so cool. Um, definitely, definitely recommend that one. All right now, I have my blush, contour. I put a little bit of highlighter on. I also added some fake freckles. I don't know if they look that good. I haven't done them in a while, so I'm kind of like, how do I do this again? In the palette, there's this white shimmer shade right here. I just sprayed my face with some setting spray. I love using eyeshadow as highlighter. Just putting that right there, and put some on my cupid's bow and on the bridge of my nose all the typical highlight places. Yeah, this look is almost done. Every video, just like my movie recommendations, I do a song of the day. So here is today's song. I also have a playlist where I keep track of all of the songs that I put in my videos. So if you wanna check out that. I also have, um, I've been loving making a Spotify playlist. So if you wanna check out some of my playlists, I don't know if I have the best music taste because sometimes it's kind of basic, but I feel like I find some cool music. I feel like a lot of my music taste comes from certain movies that I really like. Now I'm just going to finish this off with lips. I am using this lipstick. It is from Colored Rain. It's in the shade Charmed. It's just a regular lipstick. Um, it's a normal lipstick shade. It's been a while since I, not a while, but it's been like two weeks since my last video that I filmed. So my hair is lavender now. I actually, I've been using this new purple shampoo that I got from Ulta. And then I found this conditioner at Ulta and it's a purple conditioner, but it's meant for purple hair. It, like tints your hair every time you wash it. And it's been working really well. I think the brand of conditioner it was, is called Kara Love or something. And it's called Clenditioner. I sorted out all of my shop my stash for August. I don't know if, I don't really watch videos like that, but I kind of get the concept and I want to apply it to my own makeup collection because even if I don't use up everything that I, that I sectioned out to use in August, at least I'll get some really good consistent use out of the products. Now you don't know what Shot My Stash is, it's kind of similar to Project Pan where the goal is to use up your makeup, you know? There's so much talk about buying new makeup and new product releases, and this is a small tangent, but I wish there was just an equal amount of talk about like using those products up and like making progress on those products. No one talks about that side of makeup. I think that's even more important because you should be using the products that you paid money for and instead of just buying all this crap that you're just gonna sit there. So that is the makeup all done. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you would like to check out this palette, it's the Persephone palette by Park Avenue. Avenue Cosmetics. And if you're interested in it, I do have a 10% off code if you use Makeup Mystery. Final thoughts on the palette. I feel like the matte shades, the ones that I used at least, worked really well. I also used one of the pressed shimmers, not glitter, but one of the shimmers, and that was really pigmented. The only thing with the pressed glitters, and this goes for all pressed glitters that I've used, you have to really 
pack it on to get good um, payoff of the glitter. You can't just like lightly brush it onto your eye. Like you either have to use your finger to apply it kind of messily, which is just the look that you would be going for, or use kind of a packing brush almost, like a dense brush. Put some of the shimmers over top of the matte shades. They weren't as pigmented as they were just on their own, like on an eyeshadow primer. If you would like to follow me on my other social media platforms, I am super consistent on Instagram. I'm always updating my Instagram stories and I post almost every day, not every single day, but most days I will post something. So my Instagram is Makeup and Mystery and my TikTok is also Makeup and Mystery. I've been kind of behind on TikToks lately, but I just filmed a bunch. Um, right now. And then my Twitter is MUA Mystery. I'm always on Twitter too, but I don't always post about makeup. I mean, I do post a lot about makeup, but you know, I post some other things other than makeup on Twitter. So if you'd like to follow me on there, that's MUA Mystery. So some of the other videos that I uploaded recently, my last video before this one, I uploaded a full face of milk makeup and I did kind of a brand review of milk and talked a lot about my thoughts on the brand and what are my favorite products from milk. And then before that, I uploaded a compilation of all of my TikToks, not all of them, but some of them. Let me know if I had this idea since there's all these rumors about TikTok getting uh, banned in the US or something. I don't know if that's true or not, but I kind of want to take it seriously just in case that would happen. So I'm thinking of just like downloading all of my TikToks, like saving every single TikTok I have on there, which is a lot, and just making a super, super long YouTube video of just all of them. Obviously, if there's some like ones that I don't like anymore, I won't keep those in, but I'm thinking of just making like a super, super long montage of just like all the TikToks I've made just in case. Let me know if that sounds like a good idea. I mean, no one even has to watch it. It's more just for me. So I have like a record of this, you know, part of my life where I did TikTok a lot. And before that, I uploaded a full face of indie makeup brands, smaller makeup brands, ones that you might not have heard of, brands that maybe need more recognition on my channel that I just haven't heard a lot of people talk about. If you'd like to subscribe, I would appreciate it so much, but you obviously don't have to. Just watching this video is good enough. Like, thank you so much. I'm not exactly sure what my next video is gonna be, but I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.